there everybody and welcome to another book corner. This time we are looking at the unauthorized prime target, an unauthorized story guide to Transformers, Beast Wars and Beast Machines by Lars Pearson. This is a fairly hefty book basically covering um, all of the G1 cartoons, uh, Western cartoons, uh, the Beast Wars and the Beast Machines cartoon as well as the Marvel comic books as well as a price guide. So there's an awful lot in here. The book itself, uh, no pictures, it is 100% a wall of text. So there's not a great deal to it in terms of uh, pretty pictures to look at. However, um, this book is very good as a reference. The only thing is, is that uh, this book itself is not uh, impartial by any means. Uh, the writer himself has put his own twist, his own beliefs and things like that onto it, which some might agree with and think that adds personal touch. Others might disagree if they want a cold heart clinical book. I'll just um, open it up to show you the, the actual great depth that uh, goes into this particular one. Let's take a look at Autobot Spike. First of all, it gives you the US transmission date. Um, and it gives you the order, it's season 2, episode 1, and it gives you the writer, Donald F. Glut. Uh, it tells you who the main characters of the episode are. It gives you a fairly lengthy uh, summary of the episode, which runs all the way down there. After that, it, it breaks down into, into uh, lots of different uh, subcategories of things, which, which is quite interesting. It tells you about ass whoopings. Uh, Spike nearly loses uh, his life and... and Jures a heated uh, personality crisis as Autobot X, Spike slash Autobot X, strafes Optimus Prime with his gu with gun mode Megatron, but Prime also shoots him. So it kind of tells you very quickly about the battles that ensue in the episode. It tells you about the goofs, uh, so animation errors or things like that. It gives you TV tie-ins. After Spike's traumatic experience, Bumblebee offhandedly ponders a robot mind inhabiting a human body. Ironically, Rodimus Prime, Ultra Magnus, RC, and Springer undergo such a process in only human. So it, it, what he does is he, he sort of tells you, okay, this happened in this episode, but there are things that are similar. For example, in Heavy Metal Wars, uh, TV tie-ins, the Dinobot Constructicon battle in Transformers the movie is foreshadowed here. The secret of Omega Supreme contains an alternative and more plausible origin for the Constructicons. Uh, so obviously referencing the, the fact that the Constructicons were built and things like that. Uh, it also gives you character development as well for the Autobots and then gives you his final thoughts on it. Absurd, a silly concept with an even worse implementation. The elements uh, of a mentally unhinged Spike isn't much fun to watch and doesn't go anywhere. That's what I mean by him sort of putting his own sort of stick to it. Um, the other thing that this book does as well... Uh, if I can if I can find it is it gives you uh, things like this crucial bits and miscellaneous stuff this is from the secret of Omega Supreme crucial bit the secret of Omega Supreme uh, revelation of how Megatron brainwashed the Constructicons into Decepticon service origin of the Autobot Omega Supreme quite crucial uh, constructing the Constructicons and this is it uh, one of the more chewy Transformers continuity problems involves the origin of the Constrict... And then he goes through it. And again, these are all very personalised. Um, this goes into the comic books as well, Death's Head, and as I say, Beast Wars, Beast Machines are all in here. Uh, he gives the top five British comic book stories, which he rates as Aspects of Evil, The Flame Saga, The Legacy of Unicron, Time Wars, and then Target 2006. Personally, I'd put Time Wars above Target 2006, but, you know, hey, that's it. The final thing uh, is the price guide, which I always love these price guides. Bearing in mind this book was published back in 2001, okay? Here's the price guides. He gives you the price guides for mint in box and loose transformers, okay? A lot of these are actually pretty close, uh, pretty close to the, to the head, you know. Um, things like you would expect to pay around... Uh, well, let's have a look. Uh, 
Bearing in mind these are all in dollars as well. You would expect to pay about $120. Actually, that's probably a bad example. Um, you would look to pay about $500 for a mint in box Jetfire. Fair enough. And you would expect to pay about $115 for a complete Jetfire. You know, things like that. You'd expect to pay, you know, no more than $10 for Brawn and probably $45 to $50 mint on card. This is all fair enough. However, there are some which have gone totally skyward. He rates uh, Trypticon uh, as 170 mint in box or 60 loose. Now, if I could find a Trypticon for $60 mint uh, or loose, whatever, I would be very, very I would be a very, very happy man. Um, characters like uh, Scourge and Fracas. Uh, $70 loose. Hmm, fair enough then. Uh, trigger Happy and Blowpipe. $20 loose. You couldn't even buy Blowpipe's barrel for $20. Um, but, you know, this was written in 2001. But it's quite nice to have a look through these things and see which ones are pretty right and, and which ones aren't. Um, and then he finally ends up with a timeline of Transformers. It's a very, very good book. I do actually like this one. Um, I do think uh, that Lars Pearson d did a really good job in writing this. And it is a very, very good reference guide. Like I say, however, he does stamp his own personality on it, which may waver some people in terms of whether or not they like it or not. Uh, again, you know, this one, I don't know whether or not you can get hold of it now. I'm guessing, you know, bearing in mind it was published almost 10 years ago, probably quite difficult. But... I would recommend it. Anyway, this has been another book club. I am Kalal Prime, and I will catch you all later. Take care. Bye.